there. We're going to keep on talking here about bar models. Uh, if you haven't seen the video about the part whole model, that's the one that comes right before this. I recommend you watch it. You could also just watch this one and it will probably make sense. Uh, now, the part whole model, as we said, is a model that you'll use, a picture that you'll draw if you're dealing with a problem that you have multiple parts that come together to make a whole. So given that, you will be shocked to learn that the comparison model has to do with two numbers which you are comparing to one another. So let's say that you have taken up the uh, noble art of Now, to figure this out, it's not going to help you a lot to try to figure out what your collections would be if you added them together. You're not trying to find a whole lot of parts. You're comparing you, how many stamps do you have versus how many stamps does your sister have. So this sounds like a job for the comparison model. Now when you're telling your students to work on a model, oftentimes you'll be like, draw a model of this. And they'll say, I couldn't possibly do it. It is simply too hard. It's okay. There's a very easy first step. The first step with any bar model is to draw a rectangle. They can usually do that. So you say, all right, draw a rectangle. Say, okay, here's a rectangle. Ta-da, done. Now, the second part's a little trickier. You have to say, what is this rectangle? What does it represent? And remember, there are two quantities of things. There is your collection of stamps, and there is your sister's collection of stamps. Now, kid might say, well, that is a formidable rectangle. It is mighty, it is giant. My sister's stamp collection is very large. I think that's my sister's stamp collection. I say, great, let's label that. We'll say, sister's stamps. Okay, and then you uh, should draw another rectangle because you need to show your stamps on there too. Now, since we're comparisoning, uh, then it probably makes sense to have it go underneath. We'll put it over here. And be sure to talk about, okay, well, which one is longer, which one is shorter, by how much. Uh, even if you don't know how big this one is, how many numbers or how many stamps this is, you might be able to get at least a general estimate, which is a good thing that they should be doing anyway, getting a ballpark estimate of the problem before they try to solve it. And label this, my stamps. All right, now we've got sister stamps, my stamps, and you look at the problem again to see what numbers do we know. Well, I know how many stamps I have. I've got five. Five stamps. Great. Uh, now, the other thing I know is that my sister has four more stamps than I do. Well, I wouldn't put that there because my sister doesn't have four stamps. She has four more stamps than I do. But you can see if you imagine drawing a little dotted line up here, this is the number of stamps that my sister has that's the same number that I do. If we were to like draw each of the little stamps in here, one, two, three, four, five, this would also be one, two, three, four, five of my sister's stamps up in there. So that part is the same. This is the part that's different. This is the part that's four more. So I'm gonna say, well, Four more. Four more stamps than I do. Cool. And once you have this all laid out, it becomes pretty clear, oh, okay, well, to find out how many stamps my sister has, then I add up the number that I have plus this four more. Because there aren't any parts of her rectangle of stamps that is not either the same as the part that I have or part of this four more. This is five plus four. Great, five stamps plus four stamps. Uh, we've gone from marking, I don't know how many stamps she has, to saying, oh, well, five plus four, that's nine stamps. Great. So that's handy. This becomes then really handy once you solve problems that require multiple steps to complete. So let's say, instead of knowing how many stamps each of you have, uh, you know that you have five stamps. Five stamps. 
stamps because you counted, and you know that your sister has four more stamps than you do because she told you, uh, and you need to find out how many stamps would you have if you combined your forces, if you add them together. So I'd say this is the sum. Now, you don't know the sum, so you put a question mark there, trying to figure that out. Uh, but you know that you will get the sum by adding together your stamps with your sister's stamps, but you also don't know how many stamps your sister has. So you put a question mark there. Now this is a really useful thing for students to be able to look at. Because a lot of the time if you have a problem that's laid out that says, I have five stamps, my sister has four more stamps than I do, how many stamps do we have all together? Then what students want to do is like, oh well five plus four, nine stamps all together. But we don't have nine stamps together, my sister has four more stamps. This is a multi-part problem. You've got to do two problems for the price of one. Uh, but you can see what they are here. You can see, okay, this is what we're trying to figure out. And to figure that out, to add this and this, I need to know what this is. And so first I can figure that out, which is what we just did in that earlier one. Okay, five plus four is nine stamps. Okay, and now I have nine stamps plus five stamps is 14 stamps. And it's easy to see that out on here and just lay it out. Uh, there are innumerable, of course, other variations. You could be like, you have 14 stamps all together. Your sister has nine stamps. How many do you have? Well, that maybe is part whole problem. You say, there are 14 stamps all together. Your sister has nine stamps. Uh, how many more does she have than you? And that's, again, a multi-part problem. But all of these problems, these different ways of approaching this same naughty scenario, become simple and easily laid out once you have the strategy of just building a picture of it. And that is the magic of the comparison model.